Welcome to Thoroughbred Action from Gulfstream Park. A beautiful Sunday so far for racing here. Ten races on top. And that includes the Proud Man as our feature stake, as well as an overnight handicap that looks to be pretty competitive on paper. We'll turn it up to P uh, announcer Pete Aiello for today's changes and the weather conditions. The weather is beautiful. Partly cloudy skies, temperatures in the upper 80s. The main track is fast. The Tapita track is fast. First race, first half of the early daily double. The start of the 50 cent early pick five. In race one, there are no changes. Racing at Gulfstream. From the outside, Olympic Fencer wins the break, taken on by newcomer Patsy's Girl. Amore Moon is up on the outside third. Out the rail, Reign of Blessing races together with Uncaptured Grace. They're about four lengths behind. From between horses goes Her Greatness. Marimba is next with Show Me Love out the rail. And at the back is Whatnot. The favorite is last of all with less than half a mile to go. They take it to the far turn. Patsy's girl has dueling battle with Olympic Fencer on the front end. Three wide is Amore Moon from third, a gap of two and a half. Uncaptured Grace is now fourth. At the rail, that's Reign of Blessing being out kicked to touch with Marimba next. Reyes trying to weave through horses on the favorite whatnot with a quarter of a mile left to go. Olympic Fencer comes away with the lead. Patsy's girl is there second toward the outside. Amore Moon is third. Out the inside and whatnot together with Uncaptured Grace. There's an eighth of a mile to go. Patsy's girl Girl roused on the inside. Olympic Fencer on the outside. Olympic Fencer just in front. Patsy's Girl clinging to her. Olympic Fencer. Patsy's Girl. Here's the finish. Olympic Fencer wins and an upset. Patsy's Girl second. Amore Moon third. And fourth was Uncaptured Grace. Followed by Whatnot to complete your high five. And uh, they're off. Clean beginning for Desert Ruler. Moving up to his inside, Euphoria Star. The Twin Sneakers is at the rail. Outside and Federal Exchange with Pippa Delinda widest of all. They run out of the chute. Now being sent from last, Summer Ash is up to challenge for control. Here's Summer Ash going back to Federal Exchange and Pippa Delinda. Desert Ruler is now racing toward the leaders as Mirage wants him on the lead and he'll put ahead in front after the opening quarter. So a lot of action here in that opening quarter mile. They complete that quarter in 24 and 1. So Summer Ash doing battle with Desert Desert Ruler on the front end. They're five and a half furlongs from home and two better than a third running Federal Exchange. At the inside, it's Euphoria Star. Pippa Delinda's on the far outside. Hay Porter is in between horses, and then it's five to the trailer, the Twins Sneakers. They look like they put on some speed mid-race as they take it to the far turn. Indeed, the second quarter was robust. In the leader is Desert Ruler in front by an ex Summer Ash. Alongside in second, three wide. Pippa Delinda now third. Euphoria Star ridden fourth at the rail. Three wide and Hay Porter dropping back his Federal Exchange with five sixteenths to go. Romero Mirage commits Desert Ruler for home. He's in front by a neck. Ratcheting up the heat. Here's Pippa Delinda. Up on the outside now. Second Federal Exchange and Hay Porter are next. Summer Ash is back running on the inside and they're at the top of the stretch. Three quarters. one twelve and one. The leader is Desert Ruler. Down the center. Federal Exchange takes aim and Pippa Delinda's between. Pippa Delinda now sticks a neck in front. Desert Ruler is trying hard but he's been defeated. Outside in Federal Exchange. Pippa Delinda almost home. Federal Exchange up into second. Pippa Delinda in front. Pippa Delinda wins by half a length in the end. Federal Exchange second. Desert Ruler third. 138 and three.
an owner, I love the Breeders Cup to win in your end series. To win one of these challenge series is a way that we kind of map out our schedule throughout the year with our horses. So if we're considering two different races and one was a win in your end and one was a not, then I think that would be the tiebreaker for us. birth takes a lot of pressure off. Breeders' Cup Challenge, win and you're in. And they're off. Clean beginning. Epic Run was away pretty well from the inside. Here's speed from Den Street up to the outside. It's Hidden Truth on the go early. And now moving out the rail, Salty Bird. So Hidden Truth and Salty Bird, the outside and inside horses, are heads apart for the lead. Epic Run is racing in the clear, and he's racing together with Storm Strike. And it's a length back to Den Street, who improves out the rail. Millennium Condos in traffic. A length better than a watch for the loot. No speed at all from 12 o'clock. He's last of all. The quarter time is very quick for the level and distance, 23 and two. Salty Bird and Jason Huyas at a big price, and they're trying to run them off their feet early. Millennium Condo rushes forward to take a joint second alongside Epic Run in third. Den Street is trying to hold down the rail up to the between runners and Storm Strike. A gap of three. That's Hidden Truth with Watch for the Loot, and 12 o'clock is last. Around the far turn they go. Salty Bird has the lead, but Rios says go on Epic Run, and he gets a response. Epic Run is going to run right by Salty Bird. Millennium Condo is next. Den Street held up in traffic. Three back to Storm Strike. Then watch for the loot. Trying to rally from the back is 12 o'clock with a quarter of a mile left to go. Up front, the leader is Epic Run, a length and a quarter, Millennium Condo. He has the benefit of inside position and tries to go on second, 12 o'clock. Swung to the center and gaining good ground in the wrap at the top of the stretch. Epic Run has one to fight off. It's 12 o'clock, who's charging hard down the center. Epic Run almost home, charger, charging into second, 12 o'clock. Final 16th of a mile, Epic Run is drifting. 12 o'clock is surging. Epic Run is still there. Epic Run in front. 12 o'clock was second. They were four better than Millennium Condo third. Watch for the loot. He finished fourth. They're off. Blind Spot was away very nicely from the outside, and she's going to get a very easy lead. Two Beer Buzz is away in second. Prenumbrous Maker is an in-hand third, with Rock This Town moving through to take fourth. Princess Dakota is away second last, and the early trailer is Shady Secret. Down the back stretch they go. Edgar Zayas has a confident and strong hold of Blind Spot. She's odds on and in front by a length. Two, two Beer Buzz is there second toward the rail. Penumbras Maker now third. Up to fourth goes Princess Dakota. Rock this town a bit green in her action. And Shady Secret on the outside. The opening quarter was very slow. 23 and 4. Blind spot into the far turn, cruising here. Leads by two. Prenumbrous maker and Edgar Perez trying to take up the slack second. Two beer buzz is now third. A gap of five to Princess Dakota, then Shady Secret and Rock This Town with less than five sixteenths to go. It's blind spot in front now by a length. Closer second, Prenumbrous maker. Four back to two beer buzz, then Princess Dakota with a quarter of a mile left to go. Edgar Zayas tells the daughter of cross traffic blind spot that it's time to go to work. She responds with Willingly and opens four. Penumbrous Maker is flat to the boards while second. Back to third. Rock this town. Then Princess Dakota. There's an eighth of a mile to go, and Blind Spot has the lead. She's responding in kind, and she can't be caught. It's Blind Spot on the board at three to five to win it. Never in doubt by two and a half lengths. Penumbrous Maker second. Rock this town third. Princess Dakota finish fourth.
they're off. From the outside, it's Adios Dixie who wins the break, moving a taker on, pushing up Daisy, splitting them, chasing Joy. Winner Seller comes away racing in fourth. Back to fifth is Be Naughty with me, then the Chiguita Queen. Three back to Bramage, and the trailer is Dats of Fancy Fox. They go to the half mile point, pushing up Daisies, has the lead, pressed along by the favorite Adios, or rather Chasing Joy second. At the rail, that's Winter Seller in tight. On the outside, an Adios Dixie from between, be naughty with me. Yaguita Queen is behind them. She's racing in sixth, about five lengths behind. Three better than Dats of Fancy Fox in the trailer, Bramage. Past the 5 16ths, Chasing Joy has had enough of pushing up daisies and strides forward. Adios Dixie is on the chase now, and she starts to move up. In between horses, Be Naughty with me. Winter Seller got shuffled back pretty badly. Outside of her and Yaguita Queen, and they're at the top of the stretch. Adios Dixie tries to reach Chasing Joy, but Chasing Joy, she cuts the corner. She's got a kick, and now she widens to a three-length lead. Down the center, Adios Dixie tries again. Now she's gaining ground again. Final eighth of a mile. It's Chasing Joy in front. Adios Adios Dixie second, that's a fancy fox third. Adios Dixie takes one last shot, but Chasing Joy holds on to win it. Chasing Joy by a length over Adios Dixie, then that's a fancy fox. 112 and three. Racing in the Proud Man. Good beginning. Soon after the start, DeColdis dropped to last. JR's pride flashing his speed and clears to lead a length and a quarter. Malser Coco on the outside, cheerful Charlie between horses and dangerous riders along the rail. Then DeColdis and out the back is Mariachi Crush. Into the far turn they go. JR's pride has the lead, but Miguel Vasquez has Monsieur Coco right where he wants him. Second on the flank of the leader, three back to Cheerful Charlie, then it's Dangerous Ride. Mariachi Crush into Coldest at the back as they round the far turn. JR's pride all in and all done as Monsieur Coco has taken the lead while still well in hand. Cheerful Charlie is now second from the outside. Mariachi Crush to Coldest working between horses, then Dangerous Ride off the turn and the stretch drive. A Confident-looking Miguel Vasquez and Monsieur Coco with an eighth of a mile more to get. Trying to go after him second is Cheerful Charlie. Mariachi Crush is third, but Monsieur Coco, the son of Bolt Doro, impressively in the proud man. He finishes up nicely with something in reserve to win by four. Close then for second. Mariachi Crush trying to complete a St. George exacta. Cheerful Charlie was right alongside in 104 flat. Sir Khan blew the break, four lengths. 
Good start for Golden Indy. At the rail, it's the favorite, Mayor Remo. And from between them, it's Merzaz. These three are quickest. Away fourth is Thorne. Outside fifth and Divine Control. Then Bye Bye David and Sir Khan and the trailer in honor of Artie. Around the first turn they go at even money. It's Mayor Remo who has the lead and he's traveling well early. He leads by two over Merzaz in second and Thorn is an early third. Outside fourth in Golden Indy with Divine Control and Sir Khan next. Then Bye Bye David and in honor of Artie. It's a very controlled early pace, and there's certainly no change in proceedings here with Mayor Remo on top by a length. Merzaz is second. Thorne is now racing in third, well down toward the inside, fourth to Golden Indy. Then it's back to Divine Control and in honor of Artie. Bye-bye, David, between horses for Fuentes. And after the slow break, Sir Khan is at the back of the field. They have four and a half furlongs remaining here. They went a half mile in 50 seconds flat. Edgar Perez has done a good job rating Mayor Remo. He has the lead. Samuel Camacho Jr. and Thorne secure the two paths to try to make a bid from second. Three wide third is Merzaz from between horses. Bye bye, David. Wide and golden Indy. Dropping back is an honor of Artie and Sir Khan is last as they run to the top of the stretch. Mayor Remo has the lead by a neck. Thorne given every opportunity to beat him from there. Three wide Merzaz, four wide golden Indy. Bye bye, David. Slides up the inside. Three quarters, 114 and one. They're at the top of the stretch. Thorne giving Mayor Remo all he wants. Mayor Remo is still in front. Thorne is still right alongside. Down the center in Merzaz. There's an eighth of a mile to go. Mayor Remo has the lead. Thorne tries to get by. Merzaz tries to pick them both up. Here comes Merzaz over the top. Merzaz is surging at Mayor Remo. Merzaz is in time. Merzaz ran down Mayor Remo. Third was Thorne. He flattened out. 145 and three. Start from the outside for Lovey Lee, who heads off for the early lead. The last bullet's mine, trying to hold inside position and work to the rail. She'll do both. In between horses and boss, Lady Kim. Next at the fence goes Triplet, racing ahead of Aunt Nadine, who's out sprinted today. Outside of her, talking Tipsy with Admiral Hopper. And the trailer is the late running Dreaming of Audrey. They leave the backstretch and move on to the far turn. Three furlongs yet to go. Lovey Lee has the lead at a big number. Down at the inside, the last bullet's mine. Is there second? Two back to boss Lady Kim. Third, weaving through traffic. Admiral Hopper on the go now for Lionel Reyes up into a joint third and traveling well. Aunt Nadine talking tipsy wide on the course and they're at the top of the stretch. Lovey Lee has the lead. The last bullet's mine. And from between horses, Admiral Hopper. These three kick on with an eighth of a mile to go. Admiral Hopper roused to take the lead. The last bullet's mine is charging and War of Ages over the top. War of Ages trying to surge when it matters. Admiral Hopper makes the first run to take the lead and show on it. Admiral Hopper to do it by almost a length. It's the last bullet's mine who held on for second from War of Ages third. Aunt Nadine fourth in 104 and two. Strategic speed. Some speed at two, but can carry it on through their later careers. Improbable. Full of run. Improbable. Now a grade one winner. It is a complete runaway. An authoritative run. It's improbable to win the Whitney.
racing in the Miami Shores. Catton gets a quick break. The favorite chocolate bar wants rail position. He'll get it. Up on the outside, Sir Ali has speed into the top flight. Moving on with it is Laughing Boy and the charge to the first turn. Catton takes the lead from Laughing Boy as Chocolate Bar decides to back off outside in Sir Ali. From between 12-volt man, Girolamo's attack stays parked at the rail. A wide trip around the first turn for I'm a G6, third last. Second last is Clap Embroidery's Universal Payday. And the veteran Noble Drama settles in at the back of the field. The quarter time was 24 and 2. Way out wide, I'm a G6 taking a fierce hold with the leader Catton by half a length. Laughing Boy is second, three wide, Sir Ali is third. Far outside, I'm a G6, he won't settle. Settling nicely at the inside is Chocolate Bar, a length and a half better than 12 Volt Man. At the rail in Girolamo's attack. Universal Payday is with them and ridden at the back is Noble Drama. They make their way less than half a mile from the finish as they go to the first finish line. Catton has been in front from the outset, leads by a neck. Laughing Boy draws up alongside second, sequestered at the rail is Chocolate Bar. He needs a way out. From the outside, I'm a G6, dropping back Sir Ali in the clear goes 12-volt man. Giro Amo's attack will have to do better than that, so will Noble Drama as they run to the top of the stretch. Chocolate Bar, he found a seam, and he just blew by everybody, and he's still well in hand. 12-volt man's going to make him earn it on the outside, back to third. I'm a G6, less than a quarter of a mile to go. Edgar Perez and Chocolate Bar have a challenge, and it's a big challenge as 12 Volt Man is right alongside these two for an eighth of a mile more. 12 Volt Man on the outside, Chocolate Bar at the inside. Nothing gives here. Chocolate Bar inside, outside. 12 Volt Man! The 12 Volt Man wins the Miami Shores. Second is Chocolate Bar. I'm a G6 in a picture for third with Noble Drama in 144. Flat. Away. Divine Encounter quick off the blocks and tries to take a clear lead from Martha May Huvier and Bullet on Tap, their second, third. Up to the outside, Spice in Your Life racing toward the leaders. Ave Phoenix is on the far outside and Yaloma's into that top flight. It's a tightly grouped field up front, three better than Bally Moon and reaching stride is last. And Martha May Huvier took the worst of that exchange entering the turn. She's now back racing in fifth. With the advantage, it's Bullet on tap. She strides forward. Divine Encounter is all in. Yaloma's on the outside. Martha May Huvier negotiating traffic to try to rebid. Outside Ave Venix. Spice in your life is dropped anchor. Bally Moon is up the inside, and they're at the top of the stretch. Bullet on tap. Everything going her way. Martha May Huvier now has a shot to angle for racing room, and Divine Encounter is back for more. Eighth of a mile to go. Divine Encounter with renewed energy on the outside. Bullet on tap coming up empty. The rail open for Martha May Huvier, 16th to go. Divine Encounter driven out. The upset's on. Divine Encounter. Divine Encounter beat Martha May Huvier. Was a bit unlucky in the run. She was second. Bullet on tap third and 59 and one. Well, that wraps up another weekend of racing here at Gulfstream Park. We're back on Friday. We're returning to that 12.25 p.m. post. So don't miss out. We're back to our normal time for that. And nine races are scheduled. We hope to see you here on track. <laughs>